Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Unfiltered with Pastor David. Pastor, thank you for joining us today. You know, recently uh, on The View, Joy Behar mentioned, referenced uh, President Trump as a thief and a liar. What's your thoughts on that, Pastor? <laughs> what are my thoughts on Joyless Behar? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my goodness. If there's ever been anybody misnamed, it's Joy, because I have never seen any in her. So, I mean, let's just begin that way. So they were discussing, from what I understand, I saw a clip of that, John, and I, what they were discussing was something related to the, uh, the scandal that has erupted uh, and finally is getting some kind of news, even though it had erupted prior to, or the discovery was made prior to the uh, the recent uh, uh, season of elections, uh, how that uh, the president, Joe Biden, had uh, documents that were found in different locations, some Penn Center as well as other places, but they were aware of that um, just prior to the uh, midterms. And so she's saying that you can believe that uh, Joe Biden uh, is innocent and all because after all, and this is almost her, her words, she said, because Trump is a liar and a thief, which I found interesting. Now, I don't necessarily like to roll down political lines. You know my politics. We have conversations quite often about the things that I most certainly believe about uh, those who are running uh, our country at the moment and all. And because I don't really find it a, a good thing for me to bring up in church uh, uh, constantly simply because I want them to be edified in the things of the Lord. But I do have strong opinions and, and all <laughs> as it relates to that, and I can say this. What do I think? Well, I think that it's, it's wrong, it's always wrong, to uh, just uh, to broad brush somebody. You know, I'm not necessarily a uh, Trump fanatic. I'm not. I, I think that President Trump, former President Trump, uh, did a lot of good for this country. I never did uh, appreciate the, the bombastic way that he approaches things. I never liked the bullying, and I most certainly never believed that, uh, that he um, had the kind of uh, demeanor mm -hmm. that would, uh, would uh, bring honor to the office that he held. I, I had my problems with that. But at the same time, I also saw the accomplishments. And for that, I was very grateful. And this is a man who unabashedly, at least openly, stated how he loved the United States. I have no reason to believe that he wasn't telling the truth. As far as him being a liar and a, a thief, uh, I have no proof that he's a thief of any sort. I have no, no way to believe that. I've never seen evidence. Nothing's ever been brought up that he is. And so that to me is just an unkind mm -hmm. and inaccurate kind of a, a word to say about the president. On the other hand, um, nobody could dispute the fact that the present president, nobody can dispute the fact that he's been a liar in the past. I mean, it's, it's, it, that's the reason why he wasn't even able to finish his first uh, run for presidency. It was proven that he, and it's demonstrated openly, it's when the press used to actually report the news <laughs> instead of form it. But he was caught plagiarizing a British politician's speech. You know, he's a plagiarist. He's claimed that he, he graduated at the top of his class when, in fact, he was more close to the bottom. He, he's claimed that he had a full scholarship when in fact he did not have it. He's claimed to have multiple degrees and it's been demonstrated he never earned. I mean, how can you say that he says that he's just common Joe when, when this man has made millions of dollars and nobody questions where he got his money from. How do you own three homes when you make a, a senator's salary? How's that work? And so to me, it's just just the nonsense of the deceived mind. I mean, there's no openness to an idea that perhaps there's some things wrong that we ought to fix. Right. Instead, we make excuses for the people we like and ignore the reality of, of uh, the absurdity of, of our arguments in their, in their behalf. And so I have a problem with that. So when people at, like Joy Behar and the others who are part of the view, they're unsaved people. One claims to be a believer from from what I understand, I'm not sure if that's the truth, but none of those people are um, 
any anyone anyone that I would listen to. Why would I? Right. And mm -hmm. so for for her to say what she said on on TV about uh, a Trump, I just think because he's a public figure, she gets away with saying it. I just think it's wrong. So uh, I, I really believe the United States um, has gotten the president it deserves. We as a nation have, uh, we have, we have turned away from the Lord, John. We, as a nation, have, have plummeted in terms of attendance in church or belief in God. And I mean, it's plummeting. All the, all the recent statistics demonstrate that. And so when, when you have people who are elected to the Supreme Court, who uh, are placed on the su Supreme Court, who cannot give a definition of a woman, hmm. uh, who cannot say that because they say that they are not qualified to. Yet this is a person who's going to make judgments on 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 laws. It, it, it amazes hmm. me, and and the that you can choose your gender. I used to joke about that. I used I used to it's not so much joke, but I used to point that out. I'd say just because you're saying something that that doesn't mean that you are right. that. Hmm. I could say that I'm a six foot eight blue-eyed Swedish person. And, and the church used to kind of laugh over that. I said, but everybody would recognize that that's simply delusional on my part. And now you actually can do that and people don't know what to do with it. You can have a, a woman, a senator, who claims to have a Native American heritage when she doesn't have, she has maybe, I think it was like .001 or something like that. Like if you had a thousand people in the room, maybe one of them were, were a Native American, and yet she got she got position in in major university. She was elected on the basis of at least part of the basis of for claim for that particular uh, Native ancestry, and and nobody says anything right. about it. Right. So John, I really think that today in politics there needs to be a thorough cleansing. It it, it really is a swamp. There's no doubt about it. And when you have, when you have a, a former president's home raided by the FBI, mm -hmm. and they're holding documents and pointing documents out, and then you have the sitting president who had no right to take those, those classified documents because they were under the presidency of Obama. When he takes them, and it's found in, at, at this point in four different locations, and he says, oh, it's secured in my garage. We all have garages. How secure are they, really? And, um, and people are making an argument for them, John. That just shows you how sick America mm. is and how deceived it really, really is as a nation. And so I, I, just, I just pray that justice prevails in this, John, to be honest with you, because it is mind-boggling how much hatred for right. Trump there was and, and remains. There's still... There's still <laughs> campaigning against him and he's been off out of office for two years right. and they still <laughs> are campaigning. Why? Because they fear him. He represents something that that they don't have. He, he represents patriotism, mm. a love for this nation, a care for the military, uh, a, a, a normalcy of, of human relationships. I mean when you have when you have quote-unquote drag queens who are speaking to our children in right. public libraries but you can't have a Christian sharing his book, you know, like recently happened. Uh, um, they wouldn't allow him in. I forget his name at the moment. You might remember him, but he used to be in, in a, a show. I can't remember his name, but people who are listening. Was it not Cam Kirk Cameron? Cameron? Kirk Cameron. Or Kirk, Kirk Cameron. Cameron? Yeah. They wouldn't allow him in to read his, his Christian-themed uh, book, but they allow, they allow drag queens in to influence the mind of our children. Mm -hmm. This is how perverse America has become, John. And so, I think that we're in need of a thorough cleansing. And the only thing that can cleanse this world, this nation, of its putrid sin is going to be the gospel. Amen. One last thought, you know, it isn't going to be through electing another sinful man. It's going to come through the, the church awakening to Christ, sharing the word, seeing lives transformed, and preferably the church itself waking up because there are a lot of people who voted Biden in who are professing Christians and there are millions who didn't even vote. 
you know, and so we got the government that we deserve. Mm. So I just, I believe that we need to get it together with the Lord. Amen. And you know, one, one last thing to add, Pastor, the, just the, the mentality of our current administration to, we talked a little bit about this off camera. There was a, bas a female basketball player, alleged female basketball player who wouldn't stand for the national anthem or for a flag and gets busted for carrying dope marijuana. Mm -hmm. And she sent, she's caught in Russia and she's released. Mm -hmm. I, I still don't know what the grounds are for her release, but yet there is a, uh, a man who's been in, uh, you were, you know this, no man left behind. Mm -hmm. You're from the military. Mm -hmm. The slap in the face that our administration yeah, did to all of them. And I don't understand that reasoning. And again, it's that. It's catering, John. It's catering to a particular voting block. She was African American and a lesbian. They're catering to certain voting blocks. That's what they're doing. They're doing that by allowing 130 different nations crossing our borders where we are putting them up. Taxpayers are paying for them. Some are going into uh, New York and they're in a $500 a night hotel and they're trashing it. They're trashing it. And this, this is what's taking place. I'm telling you, they'll, they'll put them into certain hotels, but they won't let them into other places where rich people live and all. You know, that to me is amazing. But yeah, we see it. We're not blind. And I pray that, the, that we awaken, that right. we, as a nation we can awaken. We'll the church needs eyes. to call out. Yes, keep our eyes on Jesus Christ. Amen. And so, well, church family, with that, we do want to invite you to come join us tomorrow evening for our Wednesday evening service as your Pastor David, you're taking us through 1 John chapter 5. Chapter 5. Through five. Wow, that's mm -hmm. how long have we been in 1 John? It's seems Probably like it's Probably longer than most people appreciate. <laughs> <laughs> but it's been a fruitful study, a rich study. So I'm looking forward to our, our Wednesday evening service. Great opportunity to invite your friends and family. Church family, we have our 8.30 and 10.45 service on Sunday morning. And Pastor, you're taking us through the book of Mark. Yep. Uh, and, uh, and joining that study as well. And uh, in church family, we have uh, something I was going to bring up. We have our men's... Uh, Super Bowl breakfast on February, Saturday, February 4th. Great opportunity, men, to invite your friends and family to come out and join us. Your friends, your co-workers. Anthony Munoz will be mm -hmm. joining us. Uh, All-Star Offensive Lineman, Hall of Fame Offensive Lineman from the Bengals. And there was one more thing that I was on the tip of my tongue and I just forgot. Oh, next Wednesday we have communion. Still a little bit of time, a week from tomorrow. We have communion, so it's always a fruitful time when we're able to I enjoy it. take our eyes it's off the and just focus on Jesus. Amen. And so, uh, Pastor, thank you for joining us. Church family, thank you for joining us. We look forward to seeing you. God bless you.